Welcome, my name is Nicole and in this video I will demonstrate how to run a basic necessary condition analysis. I will show you how to draw a ceiling line and how to estimate the effect size. Let's jump into our studio. In the last video we have loaded the data into R. In the video before we have installed NCA or the NCA package in R and we have loaded the library. If you have in the meantime closed RStudio and are now catching up again, you will need to again load the library NCA into RStudio. You do not need to install the package again. This should already be there. So let's open the library. We will again use the command library NCA. The library is opened and we are now able to finally use a necessary condition analysis in R. To run a basic necessary condition analysis, you just need the command NCA. Please note that RStudio or R is sensitive to capital and small letters. That is, you need to be sure that you always use the right spelling and writing. NCA is a command of relevance. And you can see here that already a help pops up that gives you an idea on how to structure the data or the request for the command. You will need to type in on which data set you would like to perform the NCA. You will need to specify the independent variables, the potential necessary conditions. And you will need to specify the outcome variable. You could also specify some ceiling lines, but you will see if we ask for this simple command and stop after the outcome, the NCA command will automatically produce all the defaults that we need. In our example, our dataset is called average. And then we are interested in formulating a necessary condition analysis for a certain institutional environmental indicator and our foreign direct investment performance index. So, for example, we could go for political stability as a potential necessary condition. And we need to put it into quotation marks. And we need to separate it with a comma. So, political stability and FDI performance as a dependent one. A quick double check is if everything is correctly spelled and written. Political stability should have a small s. Is that the case? Seems to be. So that looks promising. And then you just enter. The output that is provided here shows the necessary condition effect size for two different ceiling line techniques. These are the two different default ceiling line techniques we have already introduced. The step function, CEFDH, and the straight line ceiling regression, CRFDH. The step function was recommended for data that is discrete with a limited number of levels. The straight ceiling line, the CRFDH, is recommended when the underlying data is continuous or has a large number of levels. On the right hand side, you can see the respective plot that is a visual representation of the CEFDH ceiling line and the CRFDH ceiling line. So the step function in red and the one for the continuous data in orange. The default output also produces an ordinary least squares regression line. That is a simple regression slope that you are used to from your regression analysis. The question now is which of these ceiling lines and therewith which kind of effect size shall we refer to? If we look at political stability, we have a scale that has a somewhat lower number of levels as compared to the other indicators in our dataset, yet above 5. It is defined between minus 2.5 and plus 2.5, with, as we can see, a somewhat lower range of empirical values present in our dataset. Nonetheless, the scale is defined for all the different in-between values. For this reason, and for the reason that the rest of the data is likewise continuous, we decided to opt for the CRFDH ceiling line for the whole example. 
That is, we will have a look at the effect size for the CRFDH ceiling line here, which is 0 0.737. If the effect size is greater than zero, which is the case for our example, there's an empty space or an empty area in the upper left corner of the scatter plot. That is this area over here. This empty zone points to a necessary condition or to the presence of a necessary condition. The necessary condition effect size ranges from zero to one. The effect size indicates to what extent a certain variable is necessary for an outcome. In other words, to what extent the condition constrains the outcome. We are now wondering how to interpret the numbers. And there's a very nice citation given in Yandol's quick start guide, indicating that an effect size can be valued as important or not, depending on the context. A given effect size can be small in one context and large in another. General qualifications for the size of an effect as small, medium or large are therefore disputable. Nonetheless, we know that we are very interested in having some benchmarks to get a feeling for what actually is a small, medium or large effect. For that purpose, we are happy that Jan also provided some ideas on general benchmarks. He is offering the following benchmarks. For an effect size between 0 and 0 0.1, he labels it as a small effect. An effect size between 0 0.1 and 0 0.3 is called a medium effect, and an effect size between 0 0.3 and 0 0.5 is a large effect. An effect size above 0 0.5 is a very large effect, and there was a very large necessary condition. In our example, we have an effect size of 0 0.737. According to this logic, we are having a very large effect and therewith a very relevant necessary condition of political stability for foreign direct investment performance. An interpretation of this result would be that we would need political stability as a necessary condition for a country to attract foreign direct investment. You can also perform a necessary condition analysis with two or more conditions, but always with only one outcome at the same time. This is called multivariate necessary condition analysis. For example, you might be interested if non-corruption, tax burden, labor regulation, political stability and political rights might be necessary conditions for foreign direct investment performance. You can use all of these variables at the same time. And the good news is the result for each individual variable does not depend on the results for the other variables. Let us perform a multivariate necessary condition analysis for our example. I will first limit my example to two variables to keep it simple. The command to perform a necessary condition analysis on multiple conditions is NCA. Again, you specify the data set, averaged, and then you specify kind of a vector of independent variables with the command C bracket and then you specify the independent variables. So let us for example take non-corruption and political stability. Then we have to specify the dependent variable, and that is again foreign direct investment performance. This is then again producing the relevant effect sizes here for non-corruption and here for political stability. If we say we again refer to the CRFDH ceiling line, we have an effect size of 0 0.614 and 0 0.737, which is the same value that was produced in the individual necessary condition analysis before. So we again have two very large effect sizes. On the right hand side, doesn't look different because we have seen already the political stability plot, but you can see actually when you click on these arrows that our studio is automatically producing the relevant scatter plots. So this one here for non-corruption, and the second one again for political stability. 
A final alternative is to identify the range of successive columns for which you would like to perform a necessary condition analysis. Let us assume you are interested to perform a necessary condition analysis for all of these potential inst institutional indicators. In that circumstance, you again use the command NCA, specify the data set, averaged. You specify the vector by providing information on the columns in which the relevant variables are in. So for example, if we want to use the indicators non-corruption to political rights, we have to tell our studio the column numbers in which these variables are in. We can see here that political rights is written in column 7 and non-corruption is written in column number 3. That is, we are interested in all the indicators from column number 3 to column number 7. And we are again interested in the effect on foreign direct investment performance. We might either write it out or we can again specify the column in which foreign direct investment performance is given. That is column number two. And if we enter, we get the results for all of these indicators. Non-corruption, tax burden, labor regulation, political stability and political rights. And again, all the different scatter plots are produced on the right hand side. If we now look at the different numbers that were generated, we can see that almost all of our indicators are to be classified as very large effect sizes. They are all above 0 0.5, except for political rights. Political rights has a value of 0 0.166. With a value of 0 0.166, we would classify this effect as a medium effect. In this case, we might be interested to do some kind of statistical significance testing, but this will be part of another video. Without engaging in statistical significance testing, we can at least say that most of our institutional indicators seem to represent necessary conditions for foreign direct investment in what performance. There's one important side note that I would like to make at this stage. You can see that we have an indicator which is called tax burden. Tax burden actually is an indicator that relates to a low tax burden. Let us look at the plot for tax burden. It's provided over here. That is, the higher the value, the lower is the tax burden and the higher is the FDI performance. This is quite relevant because when you specify a necessary condition analysis for your own data set, you need to ensure that the direction of the relationship between the two fits your theoretical idea. Why is that? The necessary condition analysis automatically searches for an empty space on the upper left corner. Feel free to get in touch if you have any questions. However, what I would recommend first is watch the further videos.